you are about to enter the fantasy football show. Please stand by like a boss. Estas entrado al fantasy of football novelas. Espera con el patrón. Smitty is live Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Get on demand one on one text advice with Smitty at the Fantasy Football Show.com. The Smitty at the Fantasy Football Show.com. You are about to enter the Fantasy Football Show. Please stand by like a boss. Estas en Toronto al Fantasy of Football Novelas. Espera con el Padrón. Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. You are about, you are about to enter the fantasy foot, foot, football show, show, show. Please stand by like a boss, boss, boss. Estas entrado al fantasy of football novelas. Espera con el padre, padrón, drón, drón. You are about to enter the fantasy football show. Please stand by like a boss. Estas entrado al fantasy of... Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Live! Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. It is baked in, boys. And it, we have all kinds of news to talk about. All kinds. We've got... Deontay Johnson's new contract. What's that mean? How do I feel about Deontay? You guys kind of know how I feel about Deontay's ADP. Some of you feel that I don't like Deontay at all. I like Deontay. Deontay's a good player, but Deontay's getting way overvalued. And that doesn't reflect on how good he could be. It reflects on how good other players are. It's more about other players than it is about Deontay. It's more about other players than it is about Zeke. When we start talking about Zeke Elliott at, at the end of two, which is ridiculous. I don't care if Zeke does well, proves me wrong. You can't take Zeke Elliott in round two or round three. You can't take Deontay in round three. You can't take Michael Pittman as much as you like him, and I like him too, in round three. It's more about the other players around that player. That's why I don't like Deontay's ADP. It has nothing to really do with Deontay. I just view Deontay as more of a risk. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Deshaun Watson. We'll talk about everything you see kind of on your screen plastered all over the place. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. 
So let's start off with uh, the, the Deshaun Watson stuff. There's not a ton to talk about, but there's always new information. And I know some people get tired of hearing about it, but this is new information. It's new. So it, it is actually pretty relevant. We're not beating a dead horse over and over. Goodell has the power under the collective bargaining agreement uh, to rule um, and, and make a final call. But he's leaving it up to his designee, Peter Harvey, the former attorney general of New Jersey. Harvey will have full and final and complete like decision-making power here. His, his decision will rule all. And so it is tough to know what's going to happen. It's tough to know what, how much power Goodell has, really. And, and if you ask me, it's um, it's basically, hey, do this, uh, Harvey. You know, but we saw Sue Robinson not necessarily do that. I don't think Roger Goodell is going to make the same mistake. Whoever Roger Goodell appointed has been told, in my opinion, this is my opinion only, told what to do. This is what you need to do. You need to listen to me. Roger Goodell didn't really have that full authority, it seems, under Sue Robinson's command because Sue Robinson came in with a number that was so extremely below what anybody expected that it was on the extreme side of the situation versus somewhere in the middle. This situation does need to be determined somewhere in the middle. What's up, Michael K, CPA? I sent you a DM, pal, um, on Instagram. So I, I feel like... I feel like people are going to be on one end of the spectrum, one end of this like topic and debate. You know, whenever we talk about this, usually a few people get upset. Usually a few people come in and say, hey, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, DM me, Badge. Uh, oh my God, how can you talk about this? He's innocent. I can't believe this. And other people are like, this guy should never play again. There's no one really in the middle. It's one extreme or the other. And, and, the truth is, none of us know what the heck's going to happen. Even Goodell probably doesn't truly know because he probably thought he had a good handle on the, on the arbitration beforehand. But he's handing off power yet again to make it look like, I think, whatever comes down, and it's going to come down a lot harder this time on the side of Deshaun Watson, the gavel will actually come down harder from this New Jersey Attorney General, Peter Harvey. He's going to come in with the, the, the gavel and come down you know, with the more of a Thor hammer this time. And I, I think I think that that puts a little separation between Roger Goodell. That's why he has a designee, because I have a feeling this time he's going to go one year indefinite. Do it. Do it. Punch it. Punch it with your own gavel, Mr. Harvey, so it doesn't look like I'm doing it. Probably what's going to probably... That's probably what's going to happen. Um, do, I, do I think there's a world where Roger Goodell wants less problems? Like, hey, if this thing goes one year, the NFLPA takes it to court. They take it to federal court. If Roger Goodell, or by way of Peter Harvey, they say one year indefinite reapply at the end of one year, the NFLPA will take it to federal court. If they could come to terms behind closed doors like they attempted to do before they resulted in allowing Sue Robinson to make her apparently irrelevant decision because the NFL has a process in place that completely circumvented her. She's out of the equation now. I'm sure she'll guide things a little bit, right? She'll guide the process because she made a determination and you can't make the arbitration, the uh, middle person look silly because why even have it? If Goodell could just come in and say, uh, no, thank you, Sue, get out of here. One year, that's going to look really bad. But having Peter Harvey do it allows Goodell a little bit of leeway to say we made a mistake with Sue Robinson. We're going to get a little backlash, but it'll be over and done. We'll have so many people that will be pleased with our decision. All of the people that will hate us, I think it's worth it because we need to set a precedent. Boom. Out for one year. Um, it could be that they meet in the middle. 12 games. 10 games. 12 games seems about right to me in terms of trying to meet in the middle, but does Goodell try and meet in the middle? I'm not saying he will. I'm not saying he won't. I don't know. No one really knows. My guess is that they try to meet in the middle. The NFL PA says no, just like they did before when they tried to give it a... I think I think the NFL PA may have even suggested 10 games. I'm not sure. Or if it was the NFL. One of the sides was right around 10 games and the other side was like no. So they left it up to Sue Robinson. Now they're probably going to do some backdoor conversation to try and see if they can come to an ar arrangement in a term. Uh, but if it goes to Harvey and Harvey makes a decision, I think the, the commissioner is going to say one year. 
But who knows? Who knows? 12 games will put it in a place where both sides are unhappy, but it's maybe down the middle so it doesn't go to court. That's kind of what we think it might happen. Um, let's see here. If the NFL, East Coast Taddy says if the NFL and the NFLP threaten to taking it to federal court, I say go for it. Um, have every girl come to court and testify. The one thing that the NFL has in its favor is that it's very successful in court. And honestly, Sue Robinson came out with a determination that literally said this man is guilty. Like her determination, if anybody's read it or heard it being read, I don't have it in front of me, but it basically says he was, he assaulted, he insulted these individuals. He assaulted these individuals. He was wrong. He did this to her determination based on the evidence that she could see. And then she gave him six games, which is so head scratching. That's why everybody's like, what? Why did Sue Robinson say six games when her entire write up, it, 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 it smelled of a full season suspension? Her write up was basically, this man did it. In my eyes, according to the investigation that I see, he actually did harass and assault. That's what her, deter- her determination, this is not coming from me, her determination. He actually was at fault of assaulting the individuals and putting them in a, in a horrible position. He was guilty of violating the league personal conduct policy, six games. It was like it didn't match up at all. Six games, did somebody brief her on what needed to happen if it was a, like a he did it plea or a, a ruling? Because it was six games, it was like not matching up. That's why everybody's up in arms. And I'm sure Cadell's like, you did everything that you were supposed to do. You basically said he, in your mind, did it. And he, you give him six games. So she did a favor to the NFL and those wanting him to be out a year because her determination, her her findings literally say that she thinks that he assaulted these individuals. So we will find out what happens that's the news that we have here. Um, there's not much more to, to, to touch on it, so we don't have to, to beat a dead horse on it, but he has assigned a designee. Um, that that information, who knows when this will happen. I will keep you posted as more information ha- uh, comes about. I'm pretty sure the next you know couple live streams we do, we're going to have something to go on, some piece of information. This On a funnier note, before we get to the rest of the news, apparently some guy says he saw me. This is a fake Smitty sighting. I think we might need a button for a smake a fake Smitty sighting. But uh apparently, apparently, fake Smith Smitty sighting. Uh where were you at the jazz festival in Napa? <laughs> apparently someone saw me there. And I said, No, pal, I barely leave the studio. I make food runs. I'm not I'm not in Napa, but Okay. I just thought that was hilarious. Dude dude thinks he literally saw me in Napa. Uh, Tony Jones, this is relevant news because Alvin Kamara may or may not be suspended. Uh, It's looking more and more likely that Kamara could escape an early season suspension uh, because his trial, his hearing, his hearing, not his trial, his hearing, was pushed forward 60 days. The hearing that would determine, you know, is is basically like the evidence of of the case and what's going to happen. And that, that hearing got pushed into, you know, 60 days out. So... The odds of him getting suspended early on are very low at this point. And the only thing that can really happen is if a trial were to kickstart during the year, I believe, and we had Tony the attorney on, and he kind of confirmed that it could go either way, but he does see my point. He does agree that this could go this way. That if if a, a, a trial does start in the middle of the year, the NFL is probably very likely to be like, let's put this man on... Um, on the on paid leave on the commissioner exempt list, which they can do. And if they put them on paid leave, they can do that. They can do that. Take care of your business, go to court. We're not going to have you just conduct this trial in, in public opinion, you know, in front of everyone and put a bad light on the NFL. So we're going to put you on the exempt list. So be careful. Kamara could be a trap in a way. He could be a league winner in at the end of round two or top of round three, which is where I say at the very earliest draft him. I don't say draft him at the top of two. And a two, the two, three turn. I'm okay with it in one league, but why put your season on the line? I'd rather have Brees Hall all year than have potentially a situation where Kamara's out for um, the, the tail end of the season because a trial starts. Um, but it is looking more and more likely like he'll play. So the backup role is a little less important than it, than it may have been a, a month ago, but it's still something to keep tabs on. Tony Jones 
uh, is struggling for roster spots. So that means that 32-year-old, I, I believe, Mark Ingram is the, the the main backup in New Orleans. And I don't know that he holds up. So I don't know that this situation is very good regardless. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't believe that everybody keeps pumping up Ingram. I just don't see him staying healthy. But if you had to grab a backup, according to this report, Tony Jones is struggling to to keep his roster spot. We got a couple of real quick super chats from Ron Navy. Ron Navy, thank you, my, my good man. Uh, appreciate you. Thanks for the super chat. Giddy up. Ron says, uh, get the, the show started hot. Let's go. Appreciate you, Ron. And then Ron also says, find Smitty, visit taco shops. We're going to do eventually as we get bigger. Right now, I think I'd be sitting there for, for a day <laughs> if I did a fine Smitty. But once we get a little bigger, we're going to do a fine Smitty and get a prize. Smitty's going to sit out with a signed jersey somewhere, do a live stream. First person that shows up gets it. That's what we're probably going to do when we get a little bigger. But I, I am a little worried that I've got my followers so spread out. You know, we have, we, we have some Arizona people for sure, but... We'll do some stuff like that. Or if I go to another state, I'll do it. Like anytime I travel, like we, we might be going to California on a little family vacation um, at the, I think at the end of the year or beginning of next year. So we'll maybe do something like that. I'll be, I'll be sitting around in California waiting for somebody to come by. Michael K, CPA in the house. Appreciate you, buddy boy. Okay. Uh, here's another piece of news that I think is worth talking about. Isaiah Pacheco, this guy, this guy's really intriguing. I did a thing on him in the in the earlier part of the offseason, talked about how he's kind of sneaky. He's he's you know rookies never really get fully unleashed in a in a KC offense because it's such a complicated playbook, it's such a complicated scheme. Um, the offense is really hard to learn. I think. Uh, I think Pacheco is looking really good right now. And I like Clyde Edwards Alaire. Sign me up for Clyde in round seven all day long. That's a bargain. You know, I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, I, I, I just don't like, I just don't like uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire. You know, he's failed me. He failed me. I don't believe in him, but he's going around seven. So if you're going to hold against him the fact that he had his, what, append what was it, his appendix or his gallbladder? I think his gallbladder removed during the year or, or, he, he played at 160 pounds instead of 200. It was absolutely insane. He's 160 pounds. The dude had a bad uh, bad hand dealt to him last year. Uh, Omar, what's up? Rate my team. Half PPR, Lance, Jamar, Lamb, Cooks, Akers, ETN. I like it, bro. I'm not a huge Akers fan, but it looks like you got, I guess, decent value on that. Um, but it's good, good squad, Omar. Good squad. I'd choose someone different than Akers. That's me, bro. I'm different. Joel Diaz likes Pacheco. He says, sign me up from Pacheco. Uh, but if you cuff Pacheco and Clyde together, you might have something there. You know? Zach F says Clyde's a league winner. I, I don't I don't disagree. I think that at seven round value, you are baking in every bit of risk on the planet. Brian doesn't like Clyde. I'm surprised you're a big underdog guy. You like underdog players that are that are that are undervalued and doubted. And you have Clyde as your third. Well, I guess Rojo's more undervalued. So there you go. That's why you did it. Okay, I got you. I got you. Pacheco, great hands, good blocker, runs hard, elite speed, good size. He has a really good speed and size, like a real great combination. So I say grab him with Clyde, and you're, you're going to do okay. Um, Matthew Stafford dealing with an elbow tendonitis issue. Uh, they, ex they do not expect Stafford to participate in team drills next week. That's not great, but, you know, it's, it's early, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, James Cook, this report right here, James Cook is looking really, really good according to reports. But then you see a report saying Zach Moss has done everything he can to look successful. So they're, they're talking of both of them. This is like that John Gruden talk where they're like, it's basically like this. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, it's, yeah, you in the back. Um, how is Zach Moss? He's fantastic. Zach Moss is the best thing on this on the face of this earth. What about uh, James Cook? James Cook is a, a dog. He's a beast. He's probably the best running back on this roster. That's like Gruden speak, you know, where, where Gruden like literally uh, talks up everybody and, and like order of questioning. You know, this is very much order of questioning. You know, talk about uh, talk about James Cook. Talk about Zach Moss. Talk about all your running back, your running back stable. How are they all doing? We like them all. They're all doing great. Or as you talk to Bill Belichick, is there a standout in camp? No. Is anybody looking good, Bill Belichick? Anybody looking good? No. 
everybody's doing very mediocre. That is Bill Belichick speak versus another coach talking up his players and stealing confidence. Uh, both both strategies can work, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not I'm not sold on any one of these guys. I, you know, what about Singletary? You know, I, I Singletary is the guy. You know, until he gets bumped out, until he gets hurt. So I'm just not going near, and I don't, I don't like his ADP. I'm not going near the situation. I'm just not going near it. It doesn't mean I don't like it. doesn't mean that it can't do well. doesn't mean that at some point I'll change my mind. This is the dog I want to talk about. We got him right in the middle of the screen here. This guy right here is getting disrespected left and right. I don't even want to hear it anymore. Oh, oh, but Smitty, but Smitty, he's not going to catch a lot of passes. Who said? But Smitty, he's efficient but doesn't get a lot of volume. Who told you that? But Smitty in Tennessee. In Tennessee. You're judging this man. Jalen Hurts versus Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. The two, the difference between these two players is one's a monster named Jalen Hurts that maybe we send to the moon. To the moon. The other we're sending to Uranus. And off he goes to the planet known as Uranus. Don't even compare the two quarterbacks. Don't even compare the two situations. I don't want to hear that A.J. Brown's going to replicate his volume, his target share, his need to be one of the most efficient wide receivers in the entire NFL. I don't want to hear it. In, in, in this in this comment here, Prime, you know I love you. I'm, I'm not trying to isolate you out, but I want to address this common type of comment that I see a lot. Well, A.J. Brown was a top-tier wide receiver under Tannehill or was Tannehill actually a mediocre quarterback under AJ Brown you know what I'm saying prime you can flip that that script anytime you want AJ Brown did so much with so little is that Tannehill no last I saw AJ Brown would catch the football and make people miss and knife himself all over the field constantly and we're gonna we're gonna give that credit to Tannehill Tannehill got him the football, but A.J. Brown is that that machine, yards after catch, that ability to be elusive, that has nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with Tannehill. Tannehill is headed to... And off he goes to the planet known as Uranus. Th this man might be, Tannehill might be king of Uranus by the time we're done. King of your anus, Okay. I don't want to hear Tannehill's going to struggle so bad, and they drafted a quarterback behind his back that he's looking over his shoulder. Malik Willis is getting in there by double-digit weeks, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Now, this is a concern, Omar. Omar brings up a valid concern. is the one red flag, but the only red flag. Now, there's no double red flag volume or situation problems because even though Tennessee moved the football down the field, they looked effective. There was an efficiency need out of A.J. Brown. He had to be ultra efficient in order to do damage because he would get little target share compared to the other top fives, top seven wide receivers in the NFL. He had to be ultra efficient to deliver. He had to be ultra efficient to get those numbers and he did it time in and time again. And so injury concerns, his knees are the only problem I see. But even in, in the 15 games, let's say, and he misses a couple games. He's going to be a top 10 wide receiver. This offense is going to feed him. This guy is an absolute star. Let me ask you a question. James Conklin, you said Super Chat's not showing up. Uh, try it. I've got a couple Super Chats here, James, here. i got to go through. Let me see if your Super Chat came through. Yeah, I got it, James. I got it. It's right here. James says, uh, remember last week when I asked about Isaiah Pacheco? I don't remember, James, um, what my answer was. Probably at the time it was like, I don't know that he's he's as relevant. We hadn't heard much about him. But I, I have talked him up in the offseason saying he's a good good little guy. Good little player. Little speedster. But yeah, there wasn't much to go on. Now that that changed, I don't know what I said. But appreciate you bringing him up. And I don't know what my response was. AJ Brown is a medi is mediocre at best. He's no Deontay Johnson, says Ron. Ron. Ron's trying Ron's trying to take his first lap. <laughs> hey, 
Henry made A.J. Brown and Tannehill. I mean, I don't know if I'd go that far. I'd say Henry enabled Tannehill to throw the football so A.J. Brown could carry Tannehill. I, I think I'd rephrase that for you, Ron. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we could debate all day long about how mediocre or how good Tannehill is. I've been to camp. Rojo is running with the threes. At a boy, James coming in with the the hot information. But let me let me let me let me ask. Let me pose a question to everybody in here that's doubting AJ Brown. And I know Ron's kidding, but let's talk about AJ Brown for a second, okay? Let's talk about AJ Brown for one second. And there's only 51 likes in here, and we have 140 people in the room. So please please punch that thumb up button. Let's talk about AJ Brown for a second. If AJ Brown can absolutely straight dominate with low volume. Like, what does that mean when you're ultra efficient? When you take low targets, lower than anybody else that's even remotely close to like a top 10 wide receiver, and you hang with them. What does that mean? Does that mean that you don't do well? Like, you don't consume target share? It means that you continue to step up and deliver and if you got the same volume and target share as other players around you, you would explode past their numbers because you're doing more with less. You're you're going out and equaling other players that are getting less share of or that are getting more target share than you and you're playing ball getting similar statistics, you're absolutely straight dominating. So my question for anybody that says, "Okay, AJ Brown He's just going to walk over and what? Only get so much timeshare because that's who he is? Or was he fed and delivered? And if he was fed more, does anybody truly believe that if A.J. Brown, who was one of the most efficient wide receivers in the league, that literally hit home runs out of the park every time you gave him an opportunity, do you think that if you gave him more opportunities in Tennessee, he would have just not delivered? Or would he have continued to look amazing and efficient that's my point. He's going to a better situation. A.J. Brown is walking into a Jalen Hurts environment where the guy is a cannon and everybody that says he's a dink and dump, dunk, dump off passer doesn't really, I think, understand the situation because this man walked into the NFL his first two starts through for back-to-back 300-yard games. One was a four, I believe, TD total game. The other was a three TD game. Came out as a gunslinging monster. Okay, you don't walk into your first and second game in the NFL and drop two back-to-back 300, I believe 335 and 340 yard games. I'm not exactly positive on those two numbers, but I believe it was 340 and four and 330 and three. And then his third game, uh, with this was 2020, his third game was, I believe, uh, he got benched at halftime by, by Doug Peterson. Great job, Doug. That's why you got fired, Doug. That's one reason why you got fired. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, Dougie boy, for uh, doing something pretty stupid. And so this guy, Jalen Hurts, comes in as a gunslinger. And everybody starts talking about how, how he's only efficient, doesn't do good with volume. Let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance to do something under the command of a gunslinger. You don't believe in Jalen Hurts. Get your popcorn ready. You think Jalen Hurts is a dink dink and dunk passer, short passes only, bad accuracy, doesn't have an arm, won't throw the football down the field that this offense won't unleash. Get your popcorn ready. Be ready because I'll be waiting. Drop your comment now. Drop your Jalen Hurts doubt. This guy could literally throw for 4,000 yards and run for 800, maybe be a quarterback that throws for 4K and runs for 1K at some point during his career, which is going to be phenomenal. This guy is that guy. This guy can do that kind of thing, and he's got an arsenal at his disposal. Very much different than last year. Having A.J. Brown added to your roster, are you out of your mind? If you doubt this man, A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts, both of them are going to the moon. To the moon. Absolutely. And yeah, you could drop the comments. We'll put them on here. Greg, Greg, I still appreciate you. We can disagree. It's fine. But drop your comments. If you don't like Hurts, go ahead and drop the comment. I'll put it on screen here for the record. Because Jalen Hurts, here's more. Can Hurts do it consistently? Zone 6. 
let's drop it in it's fine i don't i'm not mad at you guys i just throw them on here throw them on here start doubting jalen hurts who literally could be a top four quarterback this year he could finish as a top four fantasy football quarterback in 2022 and he could be considered a top five to seven nfl quarterback it doesn't just have to be fantasy i love the doubt i love the doubt bring the doubt keep bringing the doubt That's why you'll be last place in your league. Keep it, keep bringing it, Greg. Keep bringing it, Greg. I'll keep putting him on the screen. I know you don't like Jalen. I don't know why. Linda doesn't like him either. <laughs> keep, keep it coming. <laughs> keep it coming. Oh, man. Get ready. Try and keep the language in the chat clean. Everyone says Blackbeard. Or you'll be moderated, so... Blackbeard wants you to calm down. Whoever's dropping some some bombs out there. I don't know if it's about this Jalen Hurts topic. So, uh, but anyways, AJ Brown to the moon. To the moon. Jalen Hurts. To the moon. All the doubters. To the moon. I love it. Keep bringing the doubt. Keep bringing that Jalen Hurts doubt. That AJ Brown doubt. I love it. It's gonna make for quite a fun season. Thank you very much for for that doubt. That doubt helps keep the ADP at bay. So we need you. You're doing your part, AJ Brown and Jalen Hurts doubters. You're doing your part. We appreciate you. You only have 26 minutes left. Smitty Fantasy Football, come on. 26 minutes left. You only have 26 minutes left. Smitty Football coming on. Oh, football coming on. I read that wrong. Football coming on. That's true. Let's uh, let's put that on TV. Thank you, Ron, for reminding me. Hertz will be great. Calvin, let me let me let me highlight your comment. Hertz will be great. There you go. That's what a comment. That's what a real comment looks like. Yeah, I'm a cussing fool, says Avatar. It's okay. Avatar, the the any curse words it, it gets moderated and nobody sees them. So only the mods see it. So go ahead and uh if you want the comment read the leave it out. But appreciate you. Avatar's the man. Avatar's the highest super chatter of the year right here. The 499 spot. Avatar is the man, the myth, the legend. My boy. My boy Avatar. Hall of Fame game. Absolutely hot. Thank you for reminding me that that was going to come on while I was live because I just go over. I go over time. This is an hour show. We go at least an hour and a half, two hours every time, every day. <laughs> I just I just haven't. Everybody drop an Avatar emoji. Hertz will be top five. No question, says Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler says, go, bring it. Bring it. Bring your doubt, people. Bring your doubt. Thank you very much, AJ Brown, for all you're about to do for fantasy football. And I appreciate the doubters for AJ Brown for holding down his value. Hurt's going to be fantasy QB. A good fantasy QB was his rushing. His rushing alone. Even if he even if he was mediocre passing, he's not going to be. Here's kind of a reminder, uh, everybody, that, that KJ Osborne, I like him a lot. Ron, I know you like him a lot. I do think he's pretty darn good. Yeah, we'll probably mock draft tonight. Um, he's pretty good. I do like him a lot. But this is kind of just a reminder. It's like Vikings beat reporter uh, reports KJ Osborne is making a strong case to be the number three wide receiver in 2022. And it's just kind of a reminder that he's not the two. You know, he's fighting to be the three. He's kind of a good, sneaky, good, like bench wide receiver. But he shouldn't be in anybody's wide receiver three role. Not yet. Not as a, a projected, still fighting for the number three job. So I thought I'd bring this up because we've had KJ Osborne talked about a lot on the show. And he's a good bench wide receiver. He is a very good bench wide receiver. But we just got to be careful not to vault him into some kind of wide receiver three role. I just want to make sure. Um, Rockout says, do I have to take a lap? Why do you have to take a lap? Why would you take a lap? Rock out. Why would you have to take a lap, Rock out? What did you possibly say that would require you to take a lap, young man? Rock out almost can never. There's there's a few people here that will take less laps than the average bear, and that one of those people is Avatar. Dude's dropping, I guess, swear words in the chat, but look at him dropping the super chat. Yeah. Yeah. Mashed potatoes. You know what I'm saying? One one bad deed, two good deeds. <laughs> AJ Brown. Never had more than 106 targets in his career. He is he is a legendary tier efficiency. Couple that with 125 plus targets. What you what you say? Uh, dude is a lock top five wide receiver with 125 targets. Avatar's not having it. 
Okay, and I agree with him. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. This dude does something with about 100 targets. Imagine if he got 130, you know, which Jalen Hurts will definitely feed him. What do you think happens? An ultra-efficient player getting more targets than he's ever gotten before. His numbers go past other people's that he's been hanging with with less target share. It's, it's, it's practically science. And I, people are out here arguing it. But Avatar knows. What channel is the game on? Is it on uh, is it on uh, ESPN? Is it on is it Amazon? Uh, NBC. We need to get Sprite Zero as a sponsor. This is my weight loss cure. During the day, during the nighttime, I'm going to drink my normal Mexican cokes and and Coke. During the Daytime, we're going with the Sprite Zero. We're going no calories during the day on about four or five days out of the week. And then boom. AJ Brown is fire, says Joel. Absolutely, Joel. That's what I'm talking about, Joel. Joel Diaz, everybody. Joel, let's just give Joel a random standing ovation. Where's your mashed potatoes? Right, because Joel's been here for a while. Joel is an OG, and I appreciate Joel. That's why. Space, Ricky, appreciate you. Thank you, NBC. Joel, meet the woo. You guys coming through in the clutch. Prime, I got it on. Thank you very much. Weather is bad, says Joel. Avatar just smacked us with stats. Well done. Um, it may be postponed, says Prime. Thoughts on Chubb this year. Avoid. We're getting some weather here, too. I literally, I have, I'm, I'm on little sleep because the thunder was so loud last night. We couldn't even sleep at Casa de Smitty. It was so loud. It was, it was, it was, it was like a dump truck, you know, out in front of your house, like picking up trash and just slamming it down. Like it was, it was constant. And we we're trying to, we we're trying to sleep last night. And the thunder was crazy. Uh, we've had a lot of storms. Also, my yard guy quit. You, if you've seen on my stories, my yard guy, my yard guy. For those that know, uh, he does his work at midnight to like 3 a.m. <laughs> so I went out there at, at midnight last night to run. I was on a Instagram live and I was running and I, I did the whole run live on Instagram. You can see it on my Instagram grid. And, and when I get home, I see the yard guy across the street, working hard, putting in the, putting in the hours across the street. It's, it's, it's almost it's about one, almost one. And I'll, I walk over I'm do, to him. I'm like, dude, you haven't called me back in like two, three weeks. It's been raining like a, like a monster, monster monsoons. It's been raining like crazy. My weeds and in, in, there's grass growing in my gra the gravel in the front yard. It's like this tall, you know, all over. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I quit your yard. I quit. Dude, dude, quit my yard in the mid in midnight, dodging my calls. And I've got weeds everywhere. And now it's raining all day, rain like all day yesterday. And so your boy Smitty has, ha has to become a gardener now on top of everything I got to do. Now I got I got a gardener in my own lawn. You know, maybe we'll do it live. I don't know. But dude, dude didn't give me any notice whatsoever. Thoughts on Chubb this year. Avoid. You know, a lot of people think, oh, we, we raising Trump, Chubb up again because now the you know Deshaun Watson might get six games. This is not over. We just talked about that. It's not over. I'm staying away from Chubb. Chubb is a complete avoid for me because I, I think that it's going to be hard to move the football down the field without Deshaun Watson. There's going to be chaos. I kind of like... Kareem Hunt more than I like Nick Chubb um, in terms of value, cost of entry. Okay, so Kareem Hunt, you're getting in what, round six or seven? And you get Nick Chubb in what, round two, end of round two? Um, when he falls in three and I, and, and I don't have any running backs, I don't mind Nick Chubb. You know, I'm not saying he's a bad value in round three. The ADP will determine whether he's a good value or an avoid. But in middle of two, he's an avoid. End of round two... It's not that he's in a void. It's again back to there's just so many players I'd rather have that are a little safer. You know, even players that are changing teams that I have questions about, like Tyreek Hill. I worry a little bit about Tyreek Hill. I don't know if it's a gut instinct or what, but I worry about Tyreek Hill and I can't shake it, but he's great value. He's great value at the end of round two. Nothing wrong with having to do your own lawn. It's actually relaxing. It's not that I don't, not that I think it's beneath me, the Bruce. It's more so I don't have time to literally go get food. 
And now I've got to worry about how to maintain a jungle that this man left me with. No head start. I'm behind the eight ball. It's a jungle out there in the front yard. And I'm like, where is this guy? And there I see him at midnight working away across the street. You know, so like a tease. And he's out there just working away, pulling weeds out. Just making the yard look... It wasn't that beautiful, but... <laughs> Maybe I need to... Maybe I just need to, I don't know what I need to do, um, but we got to, we got to fix it all up. Appreciate everybody in the building. The Brucey's here. Appreciate you, Brucey. Appreciate you, uh, Cali Cowboy. Cali Cowboy with that super chat right here saying diet, Dr. Pepper, Sprite Zero. I don't think so. I've had diet. Actually, you know what? Let me try diet, Dr. Pepper. I haven't tried it in some time. I'll try diet, Dr. Pepper, but I'm going to go ahead and say the Sprite Zero. I'm really liking it. Some good stuff it's some good stuff ron navy with another super chat Where's your mashed potatoes? Yeah, buddy. ron navy says avatar he's no lock cup chase jefferson dig cd lamb debo all finish ahead of aj brown a lock top five i'll take that bet all day long just saying avatar and uh are Avatar and Ron Navy going to have a, a Super Chat War? <laughs> I love it. I love Super Chat Wars. Bring it on. Hey, Avatar, you going to take that from Ron Navy? You going to let him talk to you like that, Avatar? Let's get a Super Chat War going. <laughs> Let's see, see what Ron Navy's response is. Uh, what do you think... To my dynasty start, Smitty. Javante, Diggs, A.J. Brown, Kittle. Absolute fire, Matt. Like, you've got, you know, some older players that have still a couple years left in Diggs and Kittle. But they are, like, not spring chicken, you know, pieces there. But, you know, Javante and A.J. Brown are. So, I love that. I love that mix of now and future. I think Diggs is going to be relevant for a, a, a few years. So, that's fine play for the now and future do a nice mix i love it because you never know when the league's gonna crumble and you build this team that you can't even use so absolutely love it rock out says here's for the energy vitamin water thank you rock out appreciate you um i missed can you respond again i missed why you were taking a lap and there's so many questions that have, have come through since ron navy says Thielen will be injured and Will be uh, too. Yeah, I mean, Th Thielen, Thielen is an injury risk. Thank you, Avatar. Appreciate your super chat, buddy. Dallas winning, then Giants, then the Eagles, then Washington. Oh, Gregory's the anti Hertz guy, right? Still appreciate you, Gregory. You can live in here. Nobody, nobody, everybody give Gregory a shot. Smitty, you missed Matt's super chat. I think I got it. Sent you a final roster on Discord on the Dynasty League. Okay, James, I'll try and check that out. Matty Ice might be cooked. I don't think so. Matty Ice has been looking pretty good. Osborne season, according to Cali. Avatar says, I'll take the bet. I think AJ Brown finishes ahead of Lamb and Debo. So apparently, Avatar is challenging Ron. Ron's challenging Avatar. They're doing it in super chat format, fighting in front of everybody. And Avatar is saying that AJ Brown will be a top 10 wide receiver. Is that what it is? Ron is betting he won't be, or is it top 8? What is, what is the bet here? I was late today. Ron, uh, yeah, don't worry about that, Rock out. You just keep doing your thing. Broski. Okay, uh, let's head to the voicemails. It's voicemail time. Drop a voicemail at the Fantasy Football Show on the gram. Tell your grandma. I don't know if this is old. Smitty, I meant to ask this earlier and I got busy. Uh, what's your, uh, what's the problem with Cam Akers, why don't you like him? Is it because he's injury prone? 
I mean, I mean, I've talked about this a lot, Terry. I'm, you almost said it like you're the, it's the first time you come to my show. Hey, Smitty, why don't you like Cam? <laughs> and it was a little disappointing. Like that came from uh, that was fine, and, and you can you can love Cam all you want, Terry. Don't let me influence you if you like Cam, but that, that was pretty hilarious. Um, <laughs> I I think it comes down to this, Terry. In, in a nutshell, I've talked so much about it. I don't want to beat a, a dead horse, but I'm going to say, no running back, Terry. You've heard me say this before. No running back has ever recovered from a torn a torn Achilles, not an ACL. Adrian Peterson was an ACL. Achilles tendon. No running back in the history of the NFL has ever torn their Achilles tendon and even become a top 15 running back. I used to say top 10, but we looked into the stats and it's 15. No one's been a top 15 running back after ever tearing an Achilles tendon. Number one, uh, the job's just not available to most of the players that tear it at an older age. And in defense of Akers, we don't have a lot of sample of younger players that have their job waiting for him that have torn their Achilles. But we did see him come back during the playoffs, and he was the worst running back in the National Football League in efficiency during that time frame. The worst starter in the league, um, averaging about two yards per carry, getting bottled up left and right, getting corralled and chased down by defenders. He looked absolutely awful, and, and he had no explosion. He's also very injury prone. He was my going into the season before he tore his, his Achilles. He was my number one injury risk avoid player. Not just because I felt like he was made of glass, having multiple, like three or four injuries his rookie year that kept him off the field until the very tail end when everybody got to see what he might have talent wise. He did have talent. He did. And he may still have talent someday, but his explosion won't be there. And I'm completely avoiding him because A, he's injury prone. B, his style of play is reckless. His approach is reckless, number three, because the dude got on the field when he was six months recovered from a torn Achilles tendon. No, med modern medicine didn't make it to where he could get on the field after six months. It was a reckless and dumb decision by both him and the Rams. And what kind of problems did that create with his Achilles recovery? Because his Achilles was not recovered. I hate to break it to anybody, but you couldn't possibly, not even close, have a recovered, torn Achilles tendon, a complete recovery at six months in. He tried to play at five months in, and the team said no, but the team did say, yeah, go ahead and jump onto the field, young man. Six months recovered, which who knows what kind of damage that did. What kind of uh, cap that put on his ability to get 100%. Because playing on an injury like that that's not 100%, what kind of damage are you doing? It's almost like driving on uh, uh, brake zero brake pads on your rotors for six months and then getting your brake pads changed and expecting your car to be fine. So not going near, not going near acres at all whatsoever. J uh, Jim. Yo, Smitty, what do you think J.K. Dobbins' dynasty value is moving forward? I agree with you. I think this year he kind of starts off a little slow coming off the ACL, and he might have an up-and-down year, but that might be a good time to buy low for dynasty. What do you think about J.K. Dobbins uh, for dynasty value? Um, so the bet will be A.J. Brown doesn't finish top five, and Avatar is saying top five. Okay. And, and here's what Ron said. Avatar, $100 on AJ Brown doesn't finish top five PayPal. <laughs> All right. I can't I can't be middleman of this. This is between you guys. Uh, but it is funny to watch you fight in Super Chat form. Um, <laughs> Smitty's take on Acres reminds me of his his take on Swift last year. My, my take on Swift last year had everything to do with this guy, Anthony Lynn, who held him back all year long. And my take on Swift was when he was getting drafted 12, which he didn't earn that value. When his ADP finally fell, you saw me be more open to the idea of drafting Swift. Similar to me being open to the idea of drafting, like, let's say, Zeke Elliott in round four. Like, I'm against it in 2-3. I'm hardcore against it. You're going to find nothing but negativity on my end. You could You could categorize it as that. Uh, Smitty hates Zeke. Smitty hates Zeke. Yeah, I do it two and three round value. But if if, if Zeke falls into round four, you're going to see me open up a little bit more to the idea. And then people are going to say, remember his take on Zeke, he hated him all year. Without taking into context what I'm saying, fantasy realist, because you will see me be okay with Swift at value that he did earn. 
But but drafting him early on in the second top of round two, sometimes at the top of round one or bottom of round one, that's where I started creating my campaign of you need to make sure you stay away from Anthony Lynn running backs until Anthony Lynn got his job duties removed and revoked and stripped from him by midseason. This guy said that Swift was his second back walking in to uh, about half of a season. Realist, I think I had very good arguments and very good logic, which actually worked out the way that I explained it. But I know a lot of people will say things like Smitty didn't like him at all, which isn't true. It's stay away from him at number 12 overall because Anthony Lynn's going to hold him back, which he did. It's a completely different situation this year. Everything changes and evolves. And the same thing could happen with Zeke. Zeke in round four is very acceptable. And you can't use a blanket. You can't use my advice and, and just stretch it across all ADP movement. But but Cam Akers in round three? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, Smitty, gun to your head, Lenny or Akers? I don't know. I didn't answer quick enough, bro. Because I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I suppose... Ugh, I suppose Akers, because I feel like I could trade him easier. No one wants to trade for Lenny. Some people will draft him, but no one wants to trade for Lenny. So give me Akers so I can trade one of them. Uh, Omar, the phone lines will be open in a second here. ETN, same position as Swift last year. I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree because ETN is the best receiving talent on the roster etn has the rapport with trevor lawrence etn looks phenomenal in camp etn is gonna be the guy james robinson's not gonna be near 100 percent healthy for two years and people are worried about him i don't i don't agree at all i think etn is in the driver's seat but you know it's okay to disagree bro let's see i'll do the same what are you what are you guys talking about here ron navy says avatar are you being quiet? And then Avatar responded with, I don't know. Take Akers last round or ETN in the seventh round and a keeper ETN in round seven. That's far enough down to where you're not like having some super crazy value difference. Like round seven is plenty of value. You know, somebody that I feel is a lesser player far down the way like end of the draft doesn't move the needle for me either way smitty wins thank you ron navy don't worry avatar's coming etn is special a special breed says swaggy burks or elijah moore give me elijah moore all day long elijah moore is going to absolutely surprise some people avatar here comes avatar avatar says okay smitty me and ron a hundo on aj brown being top five winner is going to donate it in the chat. You don't have to do that, but appreciate that. But you don't have to do that. You guys take it for yourselves. Um, but whatever whatever you do, I can't stop it. Elijah Moore reminds me of 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 AB Light, an AB 2.0. I like that comparison. I love Elijah Moore. It looks like a beast. He added some weight. He's looking good. Maybe Elijah Moore is going to be a moon man. It wouldn't shock me. Also, I've been doing oh, what, what was this question? Yo, Smitty. Oh, J.K. Dobbins. I still haven't answered J.K. Dobbins. Um, J.K. Dobbins from Jim. I don't like J.K. Dobbins at all. J.K. Dobbins is coming back from a torn ACL. He's in a running back by committee where the quarterback is a vulture to all the running backs that are in the committee. And you got J.K. Dobbins, you know, not fully ready. Like he, he was a little bit behind schedule. He got defensive about it. This Hall of Fame game. Is it postponed? It's looking not, not very good right now. Um, severe weather is approaching. Please seek shelter immediately. Looks like this game is not happening yet. Maybe it gets delayed for later today or just gets postponed. Or maybe it doesn't happen at all. That's a shame. That's a shame. Opening day of football. Postponed. Sounds like the NFL. J.K. Dobbins, stay in clear of, bro. Stay in clear of him. In, in Dynasty, to answer the question from a Dynasty perspective... I just don't think the job will be there for him. You know? Like, who are they going to draft? Is Beatty going to grab a hold of the, the future? 
You know, I, I just don't know. J.K. Dobbins is a big injury risk. I don't think he stays healthy. Coming off an ACL tear, you oftentimes suffer some sort of ham, hamstring injury. And for an injury-prone player like J.K., I think the odds of him staying healthy over the long term are very low. So I'm going to say, uh, stay clear of that. Ron Navy, it's okay, Smitty. I'll have the bragging rights. You guys are really going, like, I love AJ Brown. I think it's a, like, Avatar, if I'm being honest. Um, if I'm being honest, I would say it, it's it's not going to be easy for anybody outside of the top three to, to be a lock inside the top five, but I love the boldness. I love you going after AJ Brown. I'm going to, no offense, Ron, don't tell Ron, but I'll be rooting for AJ Brown to win this only because I love AJ Brown and I love that people doubt him. But I'll be Ron, I'll be rooting for you. Don't tell Avatar because, you know, I love you, Ron. Anyway, good luck, gentlemen, with your bet. J.K. Dobbins, complete avoid. A lot of uh, puppy three drafts on uh, underdog. And a couple of things I've noticed is that uh, quarterbacks are starting to go a lot later than they were earlier. I saw Josh Allen go in the middle of the fourth in one wow. draft, and I'm just doing one now where Joe Burrow went at the 7.09 pick, the late seventh. So you can wait on quarterback in these best ball drafts. Yeah, it, it is. It's crazy. Um, waiting on quarterback, though, to be specific, waiting for the right quarterback. You know, waiting for the right quarterback at the right time. I, I still do early quarterback drafting in a sense that I'm drafting Burrow. I'm drafting Herbert. I'm drafting Josh Allen. But knowing where to draft them is key. Uh, yeah, Omar, let me give you the phone phone line, bro. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. Call into the show. Dial 602 NFL. Down. Um. Next question. Another trend that I'm personally seeing in these puppy drafts and these best ball drafts is that Kenneth Walker continues to fall. I just finished a draft where he went at the end of the 10th round, and I'm seeing him regularly go in the middle of the late 9th round. So get Kenneth Walker late. Unbelievable. You're live on the Fantasy Football Show. What can I do for you? This is Omar. Omar, what's up, my man? What's up? What can I do for you, Omar? Uh, I am in a predicament, Smitty. I, I have the chances to... Pick between uh, Brees Hall or Cam Akers and have ETN as my RB2. Hall or Cam Akers? But, uh, yeah, Hall or Cam Akers as RB1 and ETN as RB2. What do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> I know, I know. But the safest uh, the safest backup I can get uh, after that is either Ramondre Stevenson or Kareem Hunt. Okay. So what's your thoughts? So you're saying the safest backup you can get is trying to is swaying you away from Brees Hall because what you feel like he won't get the work right away, so you're scared of exactly, uh, exactly. I mean, look, you can be scared to cross the street, Omar. You know, I can't help you with that. I can I can hold your hand if you like, and we can walk across the street together. <laughs> but there is a risk out there in this <laughs> dangerous world, and if Brees Hall feels like a volume risk to you, I can't really like after all you've heard me completely like after everything you've heard me say Omar and I know you've been here about Brees Hall you know there's there's only you, you could only escape taking a lap if you're lucky by by posing this question on the show Brees Hall versus Cam Akers <laughs> I mean like no none of your argument no concern no backup running backs no other players but I can get this guy but later on I can only get Cream Hunt or I can only get, you know, Stevenson. None of that is going to influence me at all. Because if it could influence me, that means I don't really believe in B Brees Hall. Brees Hall is probably guaranteed 60% of the work out of the gate. So, yeah, that's, right. that, that's not that big of a risk, man. And not to mention, do you think Cam's guaranteed more than 60% of the work? He's not. Daryl Henderson, they're already talking about how Daryl Henderson and him will split carries. Cam Akers is probably more of a risk of volume out the gate coming off the injury with Daryl Henderson if Daryl Henderson's healthy than Brees Hall is comparatively to 
Carter. But it's it's more on the on the on the on the teams, right? Akers plays for the Rams. I mean, does that always does that always play out that way to where a player on a bad team doesn't get volume or get fed? I I, I mean, I see your concern, but Cam Akers yeah. is still potentially like. This is this is pretending I even like Cam, and I even think Cam's going to stay healthy. Like, what does it matter to me? If you ask me, in my mind, Omar, I'm sitting here going, "What good is Cam if he's out week six on?" Like, that's how that's my my thinking on Cam. I know I could be wrong. Maybe Cam Akers plays all year long. Maybe proves everybody wrong. But this dude is not. This is his first year back from a torn Achilles tendon. His first year back. Don't yeah. let anybody convince you this is his second year back from a torn Achilles tendon. It is not. He came back recklessly and stupidly. Six six months after being partially recovered from a torn Achilles, playing on a, a torn and injured Achilles, going out there and probably damaging it more, bro. Probably out there putting himself in a really bad predicament and making his Achilles have a less chance of a full recovery. Playing on it six months after he tore it. That is, this is not his second season back bro it is not even close he is about one calendar year last month was his one year anniversary like i think it was like midway through the month of tearing his achilles tendon he is less than tw- he's a little over 12 months in a couple days recovered from a completely torn achilles tendon where no running back in the history of the nfl in the history of the nfl has ever returned to top 15 running back form he is not a safer bet whatsoever you know what i'm saying and and this is not being being, yeah. being hard on you omar I, I i appreciate you omar i'm just trying to 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 hammer home my point that Brees hall is look let me show you a couple things okay i don't know if you can see the screen if not you watch the replay but here's Brees hall this is where Brees hall lives the moon man dropping loads in outer space he's a moon man okay He's on a shuttle to Mars. He's also on Mars a shuttle man. to This man's going to Mars and Moon the Moon at the same time, Omar. The question I'd ask I'd ask you is right. do, do you see in space? Cam Akers on this list? You know? So coming to me for advice, and I'm not mad at Omar. Omar's my dude. I'm passionate about the topic, not against Omar. Everything all my graphics, all my all my awards, all these players that I have on screen where we're dedicating segments to them and songs to them. Brees Hall is pretty much in every one of them. So if you come to me, Omar, I'm going to tell you, this is probably the easiest question I've been asked all year. And I don't care about Stevenson or Hunt or whatever. Those have no relevance whether you're picking the right guy. Cam is no safer than Brees Hall. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, he's way riskier. I'm sorry, go ahead, Omar. You have the floor. No, I'm I'm going to get Brees Hall. I was just trying to make a point on why I feel so vulnerable by taking Brick Hall and ETN and not having a safe backup plan. But but everything makes sense. What about what about getting Michael Carter and securing up that, that concern, you know? Not exactly where Might you're draft be. drafting these guys. Why not get you just heard uh was it Jim? Jim say that uh, Kenneth Walker and Best Ball's dropping to round nine ten. I imagine he's going a little higher in regular drafts, but why not have Kenneth Walker? Why not have Michael Carter? Why not have Tony Pollard? Why not have an arsenal of players to kind of make you feel comfortable and safe, um, you know, to back up Brees Hall? But Brees Hall is a league winner, man. I Could I be wrong? Yeah. Sure, Omar. Trust your gut. I might be I eating think, my I words. I can get, uh, I can get um, Hunt and Pollard both on the same team if I get uh, Brees Hall. Yeah, in some of my mocks. Yeah, I appreciate you, Omar. I hope you didn't think I was I was taking it out on you. All right, I'm with you. Let's do it. I'll go. With, I'll go bridge home and ETN. Let's, Omar. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Team Breeze Hall, Thanks. baby. Appreciate you. Get breezed. Yeah. Breeze is pieces, Thanks. baby. Thanks, me. Appreciate you calling anytime, Omar. I was not. I was not angling any of that toward you. You're my you're my guy. Bye. Thank you. Poor Omar. We didn't think I was I was angry at him. 
what are, do we have any super chats that came rolling in ron says smitty i have the bragging rights okay i think i'm caught up on that Brees hall 99 next gen stat score guaranteed to be a top 12 running back says prime look this team already loves him the jets have already talked about him like okay hey do you think kind of like when you hear like kenneth walker and penny and you're frustrated that you don't hear pete carroll come out and say yeah i mean kenneth walker's the guy like look look this is the guy this is our one our one a of course we're gonna get penny involved he did really good last year it sucks that we aren't hearing that from carroll but like the jets have Anytime the Jets are asked, like, hey, who is it? It's like, Brees Hall's been drafted to be our starter. You know, do you understand the draft capital situation? You're live on the Fantasy Football Show. Who am I talking to? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. You sound like you're calling from space. Dude, I am to the moon. Are you a space monster? <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> uh, no, man, I'm in uh, I'm actually in the, I'm in the car right now, man. Uh, I've been tuning into your show a little bit, man. I love your content, man. You do you do an excellent, phenomenal job. Thank you. Um, I, I had a question as far as these uh, these perennial quarterbacks that have uh, have a little bit of confusion of who are who is their one their uh, wide receiver one and their wide receiver two. I'm talking about Patrick Mahomes. And Aaron Rodgers, how do you feel about these two? And uh, you know, which two receivers do you do you see kind of making a push, to make an impact? Because you know they got to pass to somebody. Yeah, uh, it's a really good question, man. And I think it's a question that no one really obviously has the answer to. We can only you know guess. Um, if I had to guess, Correct. I would say that that the, the most talented wide receiver on the Kansas City Chief roster is Sky Moore. The draft capital's there. Mm. Um, sometimes Reed can bring wide receivers along slowly or, or, or rookies are along slowly because it's such a complicated playbook. So that makes me a pause to suggest him early on. If you need somebody early on, I, MBS and, right. and, and Juju, they, they could have more production out of the gate. They could be better. But let me ask you this. Are you drafting a KC wide receiver to be a starter for your team in, in week one? Probably well, that, not. Well, that's the thing. That, that's the thing, though. I, I right now, I love the position of where Mahomes is at because yeah, he doesn't have Tyreek, but he's still what top three at least. I mean, he's top three quarterback in the league, three, and like four. like you know, he, yeah. he's got to pass to somebody. Yeah, so yeah. he's at a. I think he's at a sweet spot. I can't can't think of it think of it off the top of my head right now, but I think he's around like what like mid like. Five or he's in the four kinda, to five like early six four to or five to six? six range depending on the style of league the points the everything but but what i was saying was that sky he's Moore. Before... if you draft sky Moore, if we're talking about sky Moore specifically right here what wide receiver is the question you're not drafting sky Moore to be your week one starter or you're in trouble you're not drafting mvs to be your week one starter or you're in trouble same thing with juju juju should not be your yeah. wide receiver three there's too many other players you could get st brown you could get iu you could get so many other players to be your wide receiver three in fantasy so the question is yeah. by the time you may need one of these guys will sky Moore be unlocked by then and be in his role and i believe he will i think he'll be the most productive yeah. wide receiver downstream to answer your question in general for Mahomes, I mean, it's a down tick. Like, he's most certainly going to not have as good a production um, without Tyreek Hill. He's just not. But, but to his, your but point. Their defense, their, their defense isn't that good, so he has to put up points. Yeah, to your point, you know, could, it, could he still find a way to score the same um, at times? I believe. I think in general he won't, but at times he will. Uh, and I think that that you know he's he's one of those quarterbacks that can facilitate and throw to a bunch of different people, so it should be okay. He still got Travis Kelsey. If Clyde edwards alaire takes a big step yeah. forward, or Pacheco's some monster surprise, but Clyde specifically is a big yeah. key component because he is such a good receiving back and he's such an elusive. And a lot of people hate Clyde. Whenever I bring Clyde up, I get nothing but trash can emojis. And I know, I know that there's reason for that. Like, I understand it, but he is such a good pass catcher. And if he can get healthy right. and play at his normal weight, he's playing at 160 pounds instead of 205 to 210 last year. 
if he can get at his normal weight, stay he healthy. He's a bowling ball, right? He is a bowling ball. And I, and I think that he'll be a key because, you know, Sky Moore, Juju, MVS, Kelsey, and, and CEH, that's still as good as, like, in, in a sense, it's still as good as, like, A-Rod had in a way. You know, like, before Adams left, you know. He had Aaron Jones, but he only had, like, Adams, you know, whereas... Uh, Kelsey and you know if Clyde's firing on all cylinders this will be no different than some of the the you know like look at Josh Allen he had he had literally digs and I don't know I mean Gabe Davis did some things but he wasn't like consistent all year but Josh Allen was able to produce so could could you argue that Casey's weaponry is the same as Josh Allen's weaponry walking into last year when when Josh Allen was just fine QB1 yeah so, so, I mean, Kelsey's that good. But I think Aaron Rodgers is in a little bit more of a predicament because his success will depend on that Green Bay approach. Do they give Aaron Jones 90 receptions? Do they make him play wide receiver, you know, from a running back perspective in motion? I'm not saying he lines up a wide receiver all the time. But if they, if they make Aaron right. Jones the number one wide receiver then Aaron mm. Rodgers could have a big year and he could somehow squeak out similar numbers that he's normally squeaking out. But if they don't utilize Aaron Jones that way, I don't th- I don't see how it could happen. But I think that Lazard's probably the best bet. I think Christian Watson, like Sky Moore, could get going by midseason. But it's, it's Lazard. Lazard's the number one wide receiver there. Aaron Rodgers has already confirmed that, which is great to hear. And he's going to get like 11 and 1,200 yards in, in, in eight touchdowns minimum if he's healthy. Yeah, you seen him today. You seen him recently. He was talking about uh, uh, AR. He was talking about uh, who's the rookie Ro- Romeo some Dubs Dubs. He was just talking about him yeah. recently. Yeah, I know. I know it's still training camp, but still, you know, you never know. Yeah. Well, appreciate you, man. Anything else you got, um, guys? I'm putting the YouTube membership link in the in the chat if you want to become a YouTube member. Uh, anything else? Say what? What did you say your name yeah. was, bro? Would you say your name was? Brandon. Brandon, Brandon, you can call me B Dub, man. D D Dub, B Dub. I'll, I'll definitely make. Sure, yeah, B Dub, B Dub. Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll make some calls here, here and now. Yeah, I, hey, appreciate the love, man. Yeah, I, I I appreciate your openness to the community. To the community, I, I feel like uh, it's very, very underrated. So you know, keep 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 grinding, man. I appreciate you, man. Me. I appreciate you. Hey, right. pre- appreciate you, brother. B Dub out, care, man. Later. B Dub calling from the moon. Another trend that I'm personally seeing in these puppy drafts and these best ball drafts is that Kenneth Walker continues to fall. Yeah. I just finished a draft. That's crazy, cra- crazy, crazy, crazy. Bruce. Hey, Sweeney, we realize that the Achilles is the worst injury for a running back to come from. Which is the worst injury for a wide receiver to come back from? Um, it, Achilles is the worst injury for any position. But but uh, I would say like, you know, broken hip wall. <laughs> you break your hip wall, you're you're probably done across the board. But I mean, Achille- Achilles injury is is the same. Like, does a wide receiver have a better shot at coming back? Yeah. But explosion, you take away a player's explosion, they got to be really good at other things to survive and become a good wide receiver for the next year or two. Because the Achilles tendon recovery is more than one year. It's about a two. A three-year recovery to get back to form. That's why running backs. Think about it logically here. For anybody that wants to doubt what I'm telling you about Achilles injuries, your boy Smitty is the best non-doctor on the internet when it comes to fantasy football injuries. Okay, I've been doing this 20 years. My observations, my my ability to pattern recognition this stuff out, and 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 and, and see everything for 20 years. I have a good grasp of what we're t- what I'm talking about here. Think about it for from this perspective. If it takes you two to three years to get over an Achilles tear, wh- why is a running back never become a top 15 running back? Is it because running backs can't become 100% ever in time, but wide receivers can? That makes no sense. It's because shelf life. If you're a running back, you have a shelf life of three or four, maybe five years if you're lucky. If you don't, If you don't play in the earlier part of your career, no job's waiting for you. No one's going to vault you into the starting job. Look at Deontay Foreman. This guy had an Achilles injury about 100 years ago. 
It's literally been handfuls of years, okay? And now he finally gets a shot to be a backup, and the job, the door opens, and he ends up starting games. That's the best we've ever seen. Marlon Mack, it's been a handful of years. He has an opportunity, and we'll see if he stays healthy. My guess is that Deonta Foreman and Marlon Mack both struggle to stay healthy because torn Achilles tendons are really, really tough to come back from and stay healthy. But but my, my, my answer to somebody saying, why is a running back, is it so hard? Because it takes two years. It takes minimum of two years to get back, and your job is now waiting for you. Now, Cam Akers is a unique case. A curious case of Cam Akers is that his job is still waiting for him. But is he ready, and will it be waiting for him a whole nother year from now? Because this is his first year back from a torn Achilles tendon. Don't let people fool you on word confusion and word speak to tell you, oh, this is his second year back. It's not. This is Cam Akers' first year back from an Achilles tear. He just celebrated his one-year anniversary from a torn Achilles. My question is, is why did Devontae Adams not really take a big hit? But Aaron Rodgers looks like he fell off the face of the earth. Can you uh, explain why Devontae didn't take a big hit, but Aaron Rodgers did? I mean, I think it's pretty clear, Brucey. It's like, uh, you know, if you're if you're a jugs machine and you're shooting out footballs, you know, it, if there's no footballs to shoot out, then you're worried about the jug machine. But whereas the person catching the football, he's the best catching jugs, jugs machine uh, football catcher on the planet. He goes to another jugs machine. Maybe that jugs machine, Derek Carr, is tossing out a little bit less, but he's still able to do his job and do his thing and be the best catching jug machine football catcher on the planet. But it comes down to footballs being shot out of the jugs machine. And so the question is, can Aaron Rodgers throw enough passes to these wide receivers? Are there any jug machine catching monsters out there on that Green Bay roster? I don't know if Lazard's going to be able to pull in enough. We will see. Uh, Pierce just became a member. Let's see here. Pierce, unbelievable. Just became a YouTube exclusive member. Pierce. Yeah. 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 Mashed potatoes. Yeah, buddy. Out of boy, Piercey. Pierce Dog in the house. I don't know if it showed up here and I missed it. I apologize, but we gave you your proper standing. Oh, thank you for telling me. We've got a lot of YouTube exclusive members. We got to try a YouTube exclusive chat out. Maybe we do that tomorrow or something like that during the day. Because we've got Macho in here. We've got uh, Piercy just joined the Piercinator. Uh, 63 Stormcat. We got One Love. I already said Macho. We got Space Ricky Swaggy. We've got uh, we've got uh, Terry Roberts. We've got um, we've got uh, I can't even name all. Everybody's in here. Avatar, um, man, tons of you, tons of you. YouTube exclusive. We have a, we have we have we're we're up there. We're up there in the hundreds of of YouTube exclusive members, and and, and we just started this thing. And the link is pinned in the live chat if you want to become a YouTube exclusive member. There's a $1.99 a month plan that gives you the emojis, but it gives you exclusivity to be when we do an exclusive member-only chat. Looks like the Raiders are coming back on the field. Um, an exclusive member chat, Q&A, start bench advice show. You will be the only one. You guys will be the only ones that can ask a question. Everybody can still watch, but the comments will be locked. And that might make some people mad. Like, oh, I'm going to pay to comment. Like, it's one show. Okay, it's one show. It'll be an important show. It'll be a start bench show. A chance for the YouTube exclusive members to, to get their questions answered pretty much guaranteed because it'll it'll shorten the amount of questions that get asked in a, in a, in a given time. Sometimes our live stream has 15 to 2,500 you know, comments. Literally, I think the record was like 3,000, 3,500 comments one time in a, in a two-hour period on a show during a start bench. There was an hour and a half, two hour period. We have like 3,500 comments or something. And that, that might even be a, a low number. Um, so it's hard to read everything. So that's going to be an advantage. Mock draft tonight, probably. Probably, broski. Mock draft or a Q&A. Probably a mock draft because we're in August now. 
Thank you, Brucey, for the questions, my man. Uh, chat number two. Let's see here. Kevin. Uh, the news coming out, Smitty. So, what do you think about the arrest to Hollywood Brown, and does that affect him at all? And what do you think the outcome of this crazy Deshaun Watson situation is going to be? Um, in in a nutshell, Hollywood Brown. I don't think he'll he'll face a uh, suspension, but you never know. Dude was going 126 miles per hour. This was not like a 95 and a 65. This is 126 miles per hour. I venture to say a lot of you have never gone that fast in your life, and you would not even dream of it um, because it's dangerous. What's up? You're live on the Fantasy Football Show. Hey, how you doing, Schmitty? This is Brian. How's everything going? Good, Brian. Appreciate you calling. Okay, hey, Schmitty, uh, need a little fantasy football advice here. So, uh, I'm in a redraft league. Uh, we switched from 12 teams to 14 teams this year, so that's something new. We're doing full PPR. Uh, the positions go one QB, two running backs, two wide receivers, one flex, one tight end, one defense, one kicker. I got the fourth pick in the draft. Uh, the scoring standard, except they, our commissioner changed one uh, um, scoring in that category, and that was the receiving yardage. You have to get, you have to go 20 yards to earn one point uh, for the receivers, and the backs are staying at 10 for one point. Um, so my my question to you is like, would you approach a draft like that based on that change of scoring with the receivers or the our, our receiving yardage? Would you would you approach that in a, in a, in a different way than you would a normal draft, or like because I'm thinking it's going to lower the value of receivers, tight ends, and 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 of course your the, your running backs that 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 you know get quite a few uh, receptions. Yeah. Uh, so so, first, so what what would you? First of all, I'm going to go say uh, who was responsible for making this change? The league commissioner. Okay. Here's what I and, and here's and what here's I have to say. This was his. Go ahead. This is what I have to say to him. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, 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 rid, it's ridiculous to do because, like, what content are you going to be able to get out there for this crap? You know? Like, why right. Why do what, – what, yeah. what makes somebody think, oh, okay, wide receivers will go PPR to give wide receivers more of an advantage. Now let's take away the value again. Like, yeah. why not just go non-PPR? Like, at least you have content yeah. that you can yeah, you grasp. Know. You know, what, what are you doing? What do you? What's he doing with this? Yeah, you know, it, and I, I talked to him and I asked him. I said, "So what? What? You know, what's your main, you know, purpose in this?" He's like, "Well, I, I want to try to make the receivers uh, it closer to value as as to the running backs." But but to me, you're you're hurting you're hurting these these you're hurting these backs too because a lot of these backs, you know, they're they 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 make they get quite a few receptions, and um, I mean, just, I'm just thinking like like. Go ahead. Just go to go to non PPR. Like, wh- why you got to keep adding layers of of like it's just ridiculous. Like, my uh-huh. my answer to you is <laughs> I I don't know, bro. <laughs> like, and that's the problem is yeah. you're not gonna find con- you're gonna read blurbs on your players and not know how to apply the information. It's a dumb dumb strategy. Yeah, yeah. He, he should take a lap. I, I, I'm thinking. In. I don't know. I, I actually I won my league last year and uh, and I have the fourth spot. I'm thinking. Oh, he he thinks I'm just gonna get cup and I'm just gonna try to you know roll off with the league and so he wants to you know because uh, ah, man it's just so i just thought you might have like some advice i, I do. have to like approach this like with some strategy i do i've got some i've got advice for you number one every single league out there what platform are you drafting on uh espn okay every league out there pretty much can give you before the draft begins an order of how everybody scored in 2021 based on that exact scoring. Okay? So you're going to want to go to your stats. Okay, like the... Yeah, go to your stats. And like when you go to your main... Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go to stats and sort by who scored the most and get a feel for what this did. This this dumb change actually did yeah. to the scoring outcomes. Once you have that, you can pretty much kind of like mm-hmm. spitball what you need to prioritize. Like if there's like a okay. 340 point scoring running back, and then you see the wide receivers that are that are ranking at like 140, 
then you know that you could probably get away with drafting a bunch of Elijah Moores and St. Browns and and get your wide receivers a little later and just stockpile on the running backs. Now, the the thing that's a little okay. bit the li- little bit like tough to gauge is that it relatively affects all the other players, that, you know, the wide receivers. So, does wide receiver become right. less valuable in a sense? Yes, but does it also make all the other wide receivers at the same time less valuable? So, therefore, if you have the best wide receivers, you're you're you know, separating yourself. Yes and no. But if if they're if yeah. the running backs are outscoring the wide receivers by like double or something crazy, then I yeah. mean, at that point, you're like, okay, I'm going to stockpile the running backs, and I'm going to come in and get St. Browns, Elijah Moore's, and all those guys. So, my right, advice right. is to look at the stats. I can't really help you exactly, but I can tell you that the stats will guide you into knowing, okay, running backs are crushing it, or are you seeing wide receivers still doing very, very well in scoring, and then you can mm-hmm. kind of take it from there. But my advice would be, yeah. if do you know your pick? I'm the fourth pick in the draft. I yeah, mean, and I was I was looking at like I was probably looking at Cooper Cup, and I'm like, and then I get this new rule change, and I'm like, oh, that that's that's not the best thing you want to hear. Yeah, JT, you know? um, you're probably going to see Henry and guys like that go CMC. I'd honestly consider, you know, like Henry more than I normally would, bro. <laughs> that's coming from a Henry doubter, yeah, but I'd probably go with Najee. I'd probably go with Najee. I think he's going to get a lot of work. Henry? That would be a okay. fantastic pick there. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, man. What about what do running backs get? Is everybody get hit with this, or is it only wide receivers? Or is it so, all so now the running the running backs? You know, still the running backs get, uh, get you know obviously they still get ten yards. They for every ten yards they earn one point, but but they the, the receptions you know the receiving yardage just uh, hurts them too because you know any it's all receiving yardage. Make sure so, you look at so that. anybody that receives the ball. Make sure you look at that. Make sure he didn't slip one in and, and it's running backs are back to normal or something like that just take a look at it make sure it's not no i did i've already I, no i you know what i did i did look yeah. at it so i'm thinking too it's gonna hurt backs like pollard you know that aren't really goal line backs you know that they yeah. they, they they get a few rushing yards and then they get they get the receptions and they but they do most of their stuff you know in between the 20s you know i mean he'll break one off every once in a while pollard will and stuff but i'm just saying like i'm thinking backs like that that you would maybe use as a rb2 or like filling in for an injured player or something or a flex that's yeah. going to hurt those type of uh those yeah. players right i don't know you know what i do i'd I mean, maybe this is your favorite league, your only right. league you can get in, but it's like, why well, play? This commissioner must have played in a league like this, and he has an advantage because he's played in it, and he's just forcing you all to do it. Like, that's ridiculous. It, well, you know, it, it it's funny you said that because he said that when he, like, he's, you know, he's been doing fantasy football for a while, and he said, yeah, he started off in CBS League, and he said, yeah, that's how they that's how exactly. they had it back then. So he's, he's and selfish. I'm just, and I'm just like, well, man. <laughs> he's selfish and he's trying you. to to make you all play a game that he's played before, so he can be king of the hill. <laughs> but you know what? You're gonna look at the stats. You're gonna you're gonna brush up on it. You're gonna take him out. Yeah. And you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it live. So I I appreciate the call, man. I wish I could give you more advice on this, but I honestly can't. No one can. I would I'd probably focus okay. on running backs as my initial guess. But you need to go look at the stats and find okay. out how how these guys finished last year. How far. Ahead was a, a running back uh, that that ran the ball a lot, you know, like a Nick Chubb or whatever, versus a a Cooper right. Cup. What's the what's the difference between players like that? So, get after those stats and, and, yeah, and take them out, man, and update us. I sure will, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Thank you, yeah, thank uh, you Brian. Man. Yeah, later. That's crazy, man. I can't stand Please those me. leagues. What's up, Victor here? Victor, I'm in a league that has 16 players. It's a dynasty league, not super flex and not dining premium. And the draft is going to happen tomorrow. I have the 1.4. My friend has the 1.13. And he wants to trade up to my pick. What should I ask for him to be a good trade for me? And if we stay with this pick, with the 1.4, if I stay, and Jonathan Taylor, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase are off the board, do you think... I got to take Najee Harris or Javante Williams. Uh, Javante's a little high there. I want you to trade down to get Javante, though. I do love that idea. Um, I would try and get his second and third round pick. You give him your first pick. And that way he has two first rounders. 
And if you got to give back like a seventh or eighth rounder, so be it. I'd try and give a much later pick. Don't give a fourth rounder. Don't do this whole even Steven. I'll give you my first, and then you give me your second, third, and I'll give you my fourth rounder. No. You make them pay, bro. You make them pay the price. You you dangle that. you got two first rounders, bro. Two first rounders. But I would take a second and a third for that pick. I really would. Um... Call back again, Ron. It, it wouldn't connect. But I probably would. I, I'd probably rather trade down to that first round pick to get Javante, get his third rounder for free. That would probably be a, a approach I'd rather do. Smitty, it seems like there's some opportunity in Kansas City with uh, some of these running backs and wide receivers, uh, whoever emerges. So if you had to pick a Kansas City receiver, who would you pick number one? Sky Moore. And we, we addressed that already, but I, I wanted to give you the name again. Sky Moore, Andy. I think by the time you need a wide receiver in KC, you shouldn't be starting one. There's too many other options. Sky Moore. What's up, Ron? Hey, what's going on, Smitty? What's up? Man, if I was that guy, I would just tell, tell him, hey, keep your league and all your changes. I'm going to play somewhere else. Yeah. I, First of all, he takes it to, from 12 to 14, and then he changes the scoring system. Uh, you know what? If I paid for it, I'd be like, I want my money back, and I'm going somewhere else. And if it was free, I'd just like dump it and find something that was – because that's not going to be no fun to play. He's doing it for himself, bro. I mean, like, really. He's, the fun? he's played in that league in that format before, so he's like, okay, I got an idea that's good for me and not for you. Here we go. Everybody gather around. That was like me when I was when I was when I first played fantasy, bro. I was like, I want to say I was like 13 years old. I was really young. I played fantasy for a long time, and I remember getting my dad, yeah, my cousins, my 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 uh, stepbrother. Um, you know, I don't even know if I got my other brother who doesn't want sports at all. He wouldn't even he wouldn't even know who the best player in the the league was. I think Tom Brady was still in the league at this point, yeah. so long ago. Tom Tom, Brady. <laughs> but but it, it I got everybody together. No, it was actually well before Tom Brady. Got everybody together and and literally blasted my my dad and my cousin and they didn't know who to pick and I was laughing inside going oh my god they don't know that that you know Emmett Smith is the best running back in the league he's gonna fall to me to five or whatever it, it, whatever player it was and and it's like it's hilarious that that you get satisfaction out of that or you think you're gonna because once the draft was over I didn't feel good I didn't feel good about having a super team I felt like I cheated. I felt like I cheated my dad. I felt like I cheated. I collected probably 10 bucks from each of them to do the league, and I drafted the best team. They didn't know what they're doing. Yeah. That's what this commissioner is doing. He's trying to play by rules that only he yeah. knows so he can, in a sense, take advantage of everybody, and it's crazy. But anyway. He didn't even put it to a vote, you know? There's, there's, It's like he's trying to be a dictator of the league, and he's not even putting it in the vote and having anybody... Yeah. Put a, have, an, have their own input in there, and they're all part of it. That's just wrong. Everybody should have a voice. Everybody should be able to agree, come to an agreement on stuff and how they want to play it. You know? Yeah. All right, let's I talk. Mean, hell, let's... it's just like the... the, the go it's ahead. just like the bet me and Avatar just made, right? We're just like, see, he's like, hey, do you want to go PPR or you want to go half PPR or how do you want to do it? Why don't you play by this guy's you scoring? Know? So... <laughs> Play by this guy's story. Hey, real real quickly, because I'm going to jump here in a second. Let's talk Deontay Johnson real quick. I, I haven't really talked, yeah. re-talked about this, even though he was at the front of it. Uh, he signed his two-year, $36 million deal, uh, contract extension. Um, it looks like uh, the deal includes $27 million in guaranteed money uh, and will pay Johnson $19 million in year one. Um, he's entering. He was entering the final year of his contract. There was some thought that maybe he wasn't going to get extended, and he's been playing that whole hold-in, you know, approach or whatever. So it was good information. I didn't go yeah. live at the time uh, for a bunch of different reasons. Number one, it, it didn't. It at the moment it didn't feel like it was, you know, as worthy of a, of an entire dedicated live stream because I was going to be going live here on this show, but. I do feel like maybe I should have went live on this to, to talk about the value because he's going to climb into a little bit higher of an ADP and my cautionary tale is not to buy into it because he's not a third 
third drafted player uh, type of type of guy, in my opinion. He is a player that I would avoid in the third round, not because he's not good, but because they're just better players in that territory that I like better, that are safer, that are more explosive, that can win your league, that can be the best pick in the draft at that point, at that time. I, I think Deontay, if you draft him in round three, you're drafting him at a place where he has to explode for you to get that value back. This guy only got peppered by Big Ben. We don't know how he's going to survive with Trubisky. We don't know how he's going to survive with a quarterback change. If you remember back when Deontay finally got going, it took him a while to build rapport with Big Ben. So I kind of am fearful of what if a quarterback changes midseason, how is he going to do? Um, I, I mean, what are your thoughts on Deontay? And again, keeping in mind, I don't hate Deontay. I just don't like his ADP at all. And when people take him at even the end of round three, it reminds me of, of a situation... I'm trying to think of a, a similar situation from last year. It just gives me the vibes of Fournette in round two. It gives me, gives me the vibes of Pittman in round three. I like Pittman, but Pittman in round three, Deontay in round three, Fournette in round two, Zeke Elliott in round two. These are grave mistakes in my opinion. What do you think? Well, all right. I mean, I'm a diehard Steeler fan. You know that. That's why but I'm asking. Not being biased with this at all. Even in my... Even in my um, best ball draft I, I haven't drafted a lot of Deontay and here's the thing it's not that hey, he's got I think he's got potential he's got a lot of talent but um, you know like you said Big Ben was throwing them last year but on the other side Deontay didn't have a chance to really run good routes long routes look at Claypool Claypool when Roethlisberger was healthy was was doing phenomenal he was getting down the field, and that was the strength, but Ben couldn't get him the ball last year. So I'm kind of open-minded. I, I mean, let's see. we got to wait and see. It's, it's, it's a prep shoot. What is he going to be like with Trubisky, or what's he going to be like with Pickett, or what's he going to be like with uh, – um, oh, God, please don't let him be the starter or the backup. <laughs> but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, Ru- talking about Rudolph? I, I, I just – Rudolph, yeah. That guy sails more balls. Every, I mean, he plays. We've seen him play, and he, his ball sails all the damn time. He, he's bad. He's just he's Slop, just bad. Sloppy balls. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he just, like, you know, he shows a little bit of good stuff, but then he just ruins it all. With His passes are always floated way look, high all look, the time. Big, big... And he puts his receivers in bad – yeah, but Ron, Big Big Ben peppered like that. That term I use like very few times when I'm talking about a quarterback and a wide receiver because it is different than force feeding or giving a player a lot of work or you know peppered him. He peppered him with targets. Anybody expecting Trubisky or Pickett to do to have the same effect on Deontay, whereas literally the exact same thing we saw with AB. AB. When Rudolph or whoever, whoever would come into the game if Big Ben went down, A.B. would vanish. He would vanish. He was not even a wide receiver one. He was barely a wide receiver two in fantasy. And this is A.B. A.B. was elite. A.B. wasn't, like, situationally good. In Pittsburgh, A.B. was the number one wide receiver in fantasy football without question. He was arguably the number one overall pick to some people. A.B. was a monster, but he would absolutely vanish when Big Ben was not in there. And this offense, it kind of does well, that. A lot, it, of, a lot of them did, though. I mean, look, A.B. was thriving when Ben was in there, but so was Juju when Juju came out. So A.B. and Juju. So Ben was throwing the ball around to the different receivers, and they were all pretty much thriving. But the thing is, Ben should have retired a year earlier. I mean, let's get real. I mean, he shouldn't have played. Last year was, was, was bad. And... And maybe De- Deontay um, with um, Trubisky or whatever is able to get longer routes and, and get more receptions. And I'm not not more receptions, but more yardage after the catch, more yak yards. Um, we don't know. We don't know because, you know, most of those catches that he got were like, you know, Ben was the quickest release all last year. So we don't know what Deontay can really be because 
he was just doing short stuff last year because that's what Big Ben could do. So do you? But, and Claypool but, suffered for it. Every, but back to my question though, is that is that worth taking as a third rounder? The answer to me is a absolute no. No, not okay. No, so no that's not this year. You got to see what can develop in Pittsburgh first before you can. I mean, maybe next year. And, yeah, but and, what, and what about fourth round? What about fourth round? You willing to take Deontay in the Who? fourth round? No, because I'm, I'm taking I'm taking uh, either Etienne or Brees Hall in the fourth round, and I'm taking uh, uh, Metcalf okay. in the fifth most. So you time. basically are on the same page as me, and I'm not. And then Ron, I'm not saying this toward you, but when I say Deontay is the most overrated wide receiver in fantasy football 2022, and I get a Steeler fan in here like yourself, and you agree. No third round, which is where we see him sometimes go, and it's crazy. No fourth round, which is where he's more consistently going, and that's kind of his ADP on the average. You're saying no to fourth round. And I think a lot of people could answer that question, but yet when I say he's the most overrated wide receiver in fantasy football, everybody hears that I don't like him. It's about his ADP. He has no business being in round three. He still has no business being in round four. And that's just facts, in my opinion, until he proves otherwise. So we kind of are on the same page, but I think people just take it the wrong way. Like, in in round five, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'll never tell someone to take a lap grabbing Deontay in round five. But people are grabbing him in three, the end of three, or at least in round four. It's crazy. And the same thing goes for Pittman. As much as I like round Pittman, five, Pittman shouldn't be in round three. Pittman shouldn't be at the top of four. He just shouldn't. There's too many safer players. Round, round five, really. Round, round five, five for both of if, them. If, if I'm being honest here, I think I think Deontay, because you got to throw last year away, I think Deontay should go right around where, where Cook and Kirk are going. I think that's where he needs to be this year as where far Brandon, as Brandon his Cooks. ADP. But I, because he had a year last year, his ADP is way overinflated. But that's my point, though. I mean, that's why I call him the most overrated wide receiver in fantasy football. It doesn't mean I don't like... Like, that That was kind of like Swift. Some of the people come in here to this day and be like, you hated Swift. I didn't hate Swift. I hated Swift at 12 overall, 11 overall. And that proved to be true. He was worth what he ended up going later in the year. And if people followed me, I started to say, okay, actually, Swift's ADP is readjusting. This is, this is decent. Um... Deontay yeah. is a is a a, a, a mess at th- at round three or even early fourth or even mid fourth or even late fourth yeah. value. You're putting your team in such a you're 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 play, putting your team in such a a hole from the beginning. And the same thing with Pittman doesn't mean I don't like I don't Pittman. Even, I don't even like Keenan Allen in the third. I don't even like Keenan Allen in his ADP. I don't like him in the third. But he's going in the third. You know, Keenan Allen's going in the third, and, and um, you know, Williams is going in the third, and sometimes Higgins goes in the third, but I've seen him go in the second a lot of times. So it's like um, a lot of these receivers are going way too early. But then again, you got to look at it. A lot of people are using that, zero, that, that damn zero running back strategy, which I don't agree with at all. And um, But, you know, what can you do? When the receivers start going, everybody freaks out and starts taking receivers, so they go a lot higher than they should go to begin with. Yep. If you're in those type of drafts, especially in underdog. All right, Ron. Any... I, I, you know, I've always drafted. Oh, go ahead. Best player available. Let the draft fall to you, and 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 um, you'll do okay. You know, that's how I've always been. So, anyways, brother. Uh, jo- uh before you run. Started. Seth Jocelyn says I like Pittman in the in the late third all day. I just don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. I I think if you want to argue mid fourth round, I, I could definitely be okay with it to the point where I'm not pressing any take a lap buttons or anything like that. I'm just but to to say he's a third rounder, Jocelyn. I don't you know, know, bro. I don't know. I don't know how there are so many other players that are more fitting of a third drafted player selection. I feel like that's a big risk that Pittman has to blow up to get your money back. Like Pittman, Pittman in round three, 
it just seems like it's not that I don't like him. It's just a risk I would not take. I would not take him in three. I think it's too early. I think it's way too early. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And again, I don't dislike him. I just think fourth round value is so much safer. I don't understand Pittman in three. I don't get it. Like, even if he ends up earning it, his ADP shouldn't be there. Like, this is kind of like the case of, of Javante. Javante's top two or three for me, but I'm not taking two or three. Even if I felt like Pittman could be a third round value and return that kind of goodness, I wouldn't take him in three. It's just not fitting to take him there. I, 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 I man, it's it's way too well, early for me. You got to consider, though, he's got a lot better quarterback uh, situation now. And we're giving A.J. Brown a boost because now he's in a better with a better quarterback, right? He finished 33 in fantasy points last year, A.J. Brown did. 33rd wide receiver in fantasy points. But we think he's going to do better this year because he's with Jalen, right? Well, we think he's going to so stay healthy. You can say the same thing with Pitt. Yeah, but I, I'm not comparing AJ huh? Brown. I'm not comparing AJ Brown and Pittman. AJ Brown's on a whole other level. It's injury concern for for AJ Brown. And if you, about, you what? I'm talking about the situation. I'm not talking. I'm not comparing AJ Brown and Pittman. I'm comparing the situation about them both going with better quarterback. Yeah. So I think Pittman. You know. So I think, you know, it's a personal choice. You don't like him there, but other people do. And you always I, say, you know, take your guy if, you, if that's yeah, who you I want. Mean, trust but, your gut. Yeah, but he's a little hot. I don't take a lot of Pittman. That, that's that's too, I don't too I don't high. take a lot of Pittman, and I don't take a lot of Williams because he goes in the third round. Yeah. P- Pittman in four I can get behind, sure. But Pittman in three, just no way. No way. All right. Appreciate you, Ron. But we're not. We're not. You what? We're not taking Pittman in four, though, because we're – we're not taking Pittman in four because we're taking either Brees Hall or ETN at four. At a boy. One or the other. At a boy. So Pittman's gone. All right, Ron. So, all right, later, brother. Appreciate you. Bye. Uh, this game's going. Um, Jacobs looked pretty good, to be honest. Uh, looked looked pretty good. Um, Trevor Lawrence is out there throwing a ball way, way above even the percent of the bounce. Oh no, that's not that's not Trevor Lawrence. Okay. Woo. Why isn't Lawrence out there for even a series? You know? I think Trevor Lawrence is a very undervalued quarterback for 2022. ETN's not going to play, by the way. He's on the sideline. Looking good. Looking looking crisp and ready to rumble. Look at that guy. Looks healthy. ETN looks healthy. a boy, ETN. Standing there like a monster. You're live on the Fantasy Football Show. Who am I talking to? Hello? Yeah, who's this? What up, Smitty? This is Chris. Chris, what's up? Well, Smitty. So, I was I had a few questions about my my own team. Um, I'm doing a ten man PPR, and I have second overall, and it's good. But I want to kind of trade down so I could get a better wide receiver and a good tight end. You number what overall? Number two. Yeah, I mean, if you're not getting JT, I'm okay trading down to getting somebody second and third round pick, and you're giving them your first rounder. You can't be giving them back something big though. You can't almost almost has got to be a two for one. Yeah. But if you do a two for one, bro. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about it. You're getting you're getting a maybe a Debo instead of a Jamar Chase or whatever, and then you're getting an extra player. You're getting even if it was a two and a four. Yeah. You're talking about Brees Hall and Debo Samuel for just you know, Cooper Cup. They give me that all day. So that's what I would or, do. Or, yeah, or a CFC. Yeah. Or I could get, you know, Mark, I could take Mark Andrews or George Kittle, you know, as, as my extra. And that's kind of what I what I, I need because I've done a few mocks and I've got, you know, CMC and, for example, like Leonard Fournette and then as a wide receiver, maybe um, Keenan Allen, you know. But then, mm-hmm. then my tight end options, I just drop because my next pick is at the end of the fourth. Yeah, I hear you, bro. I'm, so I'm, I'm all looking, about that. I want to ask you for like, for like, like, what are like possible trades I could offer? You know what I'd also look to do, bro? Go to the guy with the 12 and 13 pick. Mm-hmm. Try and get his 12 and 13 pick. Give him the number two overall. Try and give him something late, like a six rounder. You know, don't okay, give him. And a, I would don't, get, don't, I, I would take his, you know, second pick and the third pick. No, you take his. 
his 1.12 and his 2.1. You take his 12 and, oh, yeah. 12 okay. and 13 picks. Get his 12 that and 13 one. picks. You give him the two. Don't give him a fourth or fifth rounder because that's like giving him Burrow or giving him Brees Hole. Don't do that. Um, yeah, exactly. Make him pay. Make him pay. Make him pay the price. Make him pay the piper. Uh, go ahead and get. Uh, go ahead and get Javante and DeAndre Swift for one player. You're trading CMC for DeAndre Swift and 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 Javante Williams or Lamb and Swift or Javante and Debo. You know, absolute amazing, yeah. amazing job. Hold on one second, bro. I got to do a standing ovation for two of these individuals here. Kevin no dropping a ten dollar and. Jean Carlo Torres. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Mashed potatoes. Adam Wolskis. Monsters dropping super chats. I'll read these in a second. Anything else you got for me, pal? Chris? Um, if, so, for example, if the, the guy that, that has the bottom pick doesn't want to do that, is there anything else I could try to do? Uh, Just offer... I mean, you could offer everybody at once unless you think that could backfire. You know, there's some leagues where if you offer something up, someone makes fun of it and then nobody wants to do a trade. So you got to be careful or it can create a competitive environment. Sure. You got to know your, you got to know your people and say, Hey, uh, I'm going to yeah, make this trade. Sure. Does anybody want in? And you create a bidding war. So it depends on your people. Um, but I mean, you okay. ask around, try and get a second and a third rounder. I would take a second and a fourth rounder potentially, but I'd, I'd rather you see, rather you get a second and a third rounder uh, for 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 okay. you know for that two pick. That's a two pick. Bro. You, you don't have the like five pick. You don't have the seven. Rounder? You have the two. What? Would you take like a high fourth rounder for like a high second rounder and a high fourth rounder? Because I would still be like getting a, an extra player. Yeah, I mean I would, but I don't know that I'd go Andrews or Kittle. But that, that's me. I, I would rather have, you know, Brees Hall or ETN and then get that that wide receiver yeah. like Debo or whoever you're getting around to. For sure. You know. But well, even though it doesn't matter who I draft you, because uh, whenever I get some one of those trades, like, for example, you know, high second and high fourth for mm -hmm. my first, I just get shaky. I don't even think about it, you know? You could, you could toy around with the third, fourth, and fifth, you know? For the two, yeah. Uh, some some people might be willing to do that because yeah. they're going to be like, "Oh, I get to keep my second. I mean, you got to sell it too. You could be like, "Dude, you're going to get two first rounders and keep your second. I'm getting your third, fourth, and fifth. I'm not saying I love that idea, but it, when you look at it player for player for player, I mean, it's 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 pretty good. Like you're getting, you could get Etn, Brees, Hall, and Joe Burrow, you know, for one Christian McCaffrey. You know what I mean? So like, it, it's it's tempting. Yeah to go that route but it is definitely one of those that somebody might bite on yeah great thank you so much all buddy. right man appreciate you all right yeah no problem I'll have a good one kevin with a super super chat josh jacobs playing in a hall of fame game smitty been buying the dip a bit but yikes emoji i he looked pretty good right now i'm not gonna lie he looks pretty strong but He's also playing against, you know, not a full, you know, it, it's the Jaguars and a lot of their second players, you know, so this is not the, the second team players. So this is not a good game to judge that on, you know, necessarily. You're live on the fantasy football show. Who am I talking to? Ryan, what's up, my man? Man, I am in over my head in these mock drafts. I'm just constantly up against dilemmas I can't make decisions on. I'm, I'm trying to draft from somewhere around 7, 8, 9 to get used to that position. And Chase keeps falling for some reason, so I've got to take Chase. But on the turn, uh, you know, I've got the option to go CD and Debo a lot of the time. Uh, but Aaron Jones is like the last running back I consider in my top tier. Um, but I feel like I still got to go best player available there. I, I'm just nervous if I do, I go Lamb. I mean, is there anything when wrong back, with is, is there anything wrong with Najee and Lamb? I mean, that's really good too. Najee, uh, I would yeah, I would love to get Najee if he would fall to fall to that spot. Uh, I can't. Everyone, every mock draft I've done, Najee's going like six, five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, 
it could be if you if you play multiple leagues. I don't know if this is your only league, but you could toy around with McCaffrey. If McCaffrey's gone, he should be gone. But if he if he's not gone, I mean Najee's been falling. Eckler, one of those guys could probably be there. Eckler could fall. Um, if he doesn't, then yeah, I mean Jamar Chase will be there every single time at seven. But I I, I don't know. Um, Jamar, if if it's is it PPR? Uh, half PPR. Um. Yeah, I probably go. I'd probably go Najee. I would. Have you thought about trading down, man? They're just feeding Josh Jacobs in this game. I mean, it's just it's deceiving because he's playing against a, you know, a weakened, and I don't think full of starters, uh, defense right now. But but like they just keep giving him the ball over and over. Jacobs is a machine in this game. Absolute machine. He looks good. He looks good. There goes his. Eight. ADP through the roof. I mean, yeah, Everyone's it watching. might might be, bro. They're fe- <laughs> they're feeding him the ball. They're just giving him the ball, and he looks strong. He does look strong. I'll admit that. I, I'm a little biased against yeah. Josh Jacobs because of his past antics, but I mean, he looks really really strong right here. They keep throwing him the ball. He's constantly. Uh, he him? knows what he's doing. Is that him again? No, that's 22. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, are Brees Hall and ETN going to fall to you in the third and fourth round? Yeah, I, I I think I can at least get one of them. So if you take best player, uh, my, yeah, if you take best player available, you get Chase, you get Lamb, and you get you know Brees Hall. You're you're fine. You know, don't worry about it. But but I would I would take Najee or Eckler if they're there. Um, if you're fearful of running backs drying up. And then, but, but there's nothing wrong with Chase and Lamb, bro. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna be good. But it's the fact that it's 0. .5 PPR. Yeah, look, they're they're giving the ball to number 35 now. And he just ripped off a monster run. It's this defense, unfortunately. Not that Jacobs isn't looking good. He is looking good, but like anybody is touching the ball is just tearing up this Jaguars defense. <laughs> it's like wide open rushing lanes. It looks like nobody's even on the field. It's like the the Raiders <laughs> are playing against nobody. Um. 0.5 PPR makes me lean running back if possible. I'd even trade down if you can trade. You know, try and get a second and a third rounder for the, yeah. the first round pick. I would do that. Because, you know, if you can get a, a Tyree Kill and a Brees Hall for just your player, I like that a lot. So, so maybe maybe look to yeah. trade down. Yeah. The, the epiphany kind of happened to me earlier. So Aaron Jones is like the last one of my one of those top tier running backs in my opinion, but I, I love AJ Dillon. I had him last year and I really believe that this is going to be his year. I know they're going to force Aaron mm-hmm. Jones the ball, but he can't be stopped. He's, he's, he's like Javante in that, like he's going to be good. He's going to be a good running back. Yeah. So if I take Aaron Jones as my second pick, I pass up on someone like Debo or, or lamb there. Uh, and someone grabs Dylan. AJ goes to, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm okay with Aaron Jones. Uh, Zamir White looking good. A- every running back's looking good right now, I guess, the Jaguars. But Zamir White looking good. Jacobs is looking good. I like Zamir White in this offense. I think Zamir White's pretty solid. The only problem is Zamir White, I believe, has tore both of his ACLs. He's a little bit injury prone. All right, man. Well, appreciate you. Uh, good luck with that. Best player available. Usually can't do you wrong, man. Just needed to hear it restated. Appreciate yep. it. Smitty. All right, man. Appreciate you. All right, I'm going to turn the phone line off. Phone line powered down. Uh, Gene Carlo, thank you for the super chat. Gene Carlo, you still here? I haven't read your super chat yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, the rate rate or the Jaguars defense is looking a little better right now. At least the the line's looking good. Um, at least rushing the quarterback, but Stidham's a hot mess anyway. Uh, hey Smitty, which side is the best in Dynasty to trade? DeAndre Swift and T Higgins. Uh, Gene Carlo, you're still here, right? DeAndre Swift and T Higgins. He also has AJ Brown or DK. Or CD Lamb and Cam Akers, which side do you like? I like uh, Swift and and uh, T Higgins, bro. 
That was just AJ Brown and DK. I'd take T. Higgins. Give me give me Swift and T. Higgins over CD Lamb and Acres all day long, Gene Carlo. All day long, Gene Carlo. And Gene Carlo, I need to give you another round of applause for this super chat. Twenty dollars. Yeah. Mashed potatoes! Twenty dollar hauler yeah, buddy. from Gene Carlo. Beast. Beast of a man. Beast of a man. White won't take over early in the season, but he can be sneaky for points in the season. Yeah, I think later on. I, I worry a little bit about him staying healthy, but I like him a lot. I think Zamir White is a really fantastic late grab in fantasy football drafts. Like, end of your draft, grab him. Although, this little preseason debut, people are weird. I could see him uh, popping up on people's, uh, you know, sleeper radar. And you could see him getting taken a little bit higher just by seeing him out there. Just by seeing him out there doing good things. Um, let me see if he's available in a couple of my leagues. Zamir White. Uh, yeah, Zamir White. I might have to I might have to make sure I grab him in a league or two. Zamir White. Let's type him in here. Good old Zamir. Submit a claim. Who do I drop? put a claim in for him just now Higgins is my wide receiver six bro that's crazy what side do you guys like says Thor bear Thor bear where have you been Thor bear here this is for you Thor bear this is for you not being here more often and not commenting more because you are a staple here you've been here for from the beginning or not the beginning but you've been here for a while and you haven't shown up for a while to do your duty Uh, Thor Bear says, which side do you guys like? Dobbins in a 2024 first or Pollard? Ugh. I guess Dobbins in the 2024. F- I don't know. And then I try and trade Dobbins. But I think Dobbins has got higher value than Pollard via trade. So I'd probably just do that just to trade. But I like Pollard a lot. But, I mean, that's that's a lot of value. Uh, Smitty, thoughts on auction style draft and how do you not go broke getting three to four players that you want? You got to you gotta call out every other player under the sun that's going to cost a lot of dollars to get people to spend money. Once you have two or three guys and you spend a boatload of money, you're not going to pull the trigger on, on a high dollar guy as easily. Um, and you target guys like Javante Swift. Um, Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, you know, low dollar running backs, lower dollar running backs than the top, top guys. And then you can just build those wide receivers on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Legion says, if Akers is a wasted pick, then why isn't anyone getting Henderson? I see him in free agency. I don't know why. I would I would scoop up Hendy in a second if he's available. I like Hendy a lot, bro. Uh, super chat by Lee. Lee. Thanks for the super chat. Giddy up. Appreciate you, Lee. Lee says I got Kyler Murray, Najee, Javante, JJ, Adam, St. Brown, Everett, Tony, and Claypool in a 12-team auction draft. How did I do? Should I make changes? So Kyler is your quarterback. Najee, Javante, Beast, J.J., Adam, St. Brown. 12-team? Are you sure, bro? Are you sure this wasn't like a, a four-team league with your grandma? Like, what are you talking about here? How do you get Javante, Najee, Justin Jefferson, Adam, St. Brown, ever? How would you even assemble this in a 12-team auction league? This is madness, bro. You took advantage of a nursing home fantasy league. What is going on here? Is there anything to tweak? No. You just put them out there, bro. Roll them out there. Roll them out there and win, Lee. Good God. Lee's got a monster squad. <laughs> oh. Lee, Lee, Lee did a few people dirty. He brought Grams into that league. I don't, Lee. I don't know how you did that, bro. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, auction is the only way you can pull something like that off. Even if, like, you play with pretty decent players and things can fall a certain way. You know how, like, you look at someone's team and you're like, okay, you can't really keep track of who won bids. 
when you lose a bid and you're looking at the board. So that can happen in auction. Like Lee just did really good at certain picks, and then at the end of it, you look at the rosters. You're like, holy crap, those were all Lees. When I kept saying, oh, that was a good value. Oh, that was a good value. You can't possibly like know who's got who. You're too busy in the auction, and so it's possible. McDaniel showcasing Jacobs for a trade, maybe. Snoop Connor. Snoop Connor doing work. All right, guys. Nursing home champions. That's true. I will see you all tomorrow. And I apologize for not going live during the Deontay Johnson thing. You know what? I'm going to take a lap on that one real quick. I should have just went live. Regardless of how I feel about him, he was a big enough name. Ron Navy, I agree with Ron. I should have went live on that. Take a lap for me. Take a lap. I probably will miss from time to time a piece of breaking news that I got to go live on. But for the most part, I want to be the guy that goes live every time news breaks. The guy you trust to be live when news breaks. Even if I'm here to shoot it down. Even if I think that Deontay's not worth the time in the third rounder third round value I still need to get in here and I still need to do it so that's my fault take a lap on my part um, I'll see you all tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern unless news breaks then I will go live even if Deontay Johnson unsigns his contract I will go live I commit to you uh, gonna eat uh, pizza probably Lou Malinati's maybe tonight I try and convince Miss Mitty to do, do that uh, appreciate space Ricky appreciate all the super chats Ron Navy everybody dropping avatar Everybody up in this mug dropping super chats. Lee, uh, uh, Gene Carlo, appreciate Gene Carlo. Snoop Connor ripping off a, a little four yard scamper there. Atta boy, Snoop. Uh, Gene Carlo, appreciate you, Gene. Kevin, appreciate the thumbs down, even. We got, we got three people dropping the thumbs down. It's okay. Uh, get on over to thefantasyfootballshow.com. Ron Navy Show extending the chat real, real quickly. Appreciate you, Ron. Ron says, don't go. Don't go, Smitty. Don't go. Uh, explain YouTube. What is this? Explain YouTube to no two rules. What does that mean? I don't know what that means, Ron. Blackbeard, appreciate you. Aaron Rodgers admits to physical. What's that mean? What do, why is everybody writing in fragments? Snoop is a dog, says Space Ricky. Oh, to psychedelics? Aaron Rodgers admits to psychedelics. Aaron Rodgers, is there breaking news on Aaron Rodgers right now? <laughs> is, there, is Aaron Rodgers admitting to something? Do I got to hit Twitter real quick? Do I I got to get on my tweeter and see what's up? Is there breaking news right now on A-Rod? What's A-Rod up to? Minute. Oh, Long toss, no go. Um, Busby criticized initial Watson punishment. I don't see anything on A-Rod right now. A.J. Brown will be a focal point of the offense. That was one of the, the big headlines of today's show. A.J. Brown is going to beast out. Jalen Hurts is going to beast out. These guys are moon traveling machines. They're going to live in space. They're going to be in space. Rock out. Appreciate you, pal. Thanks, Ron, for extending the show, says Kayla. Appreciate you, Kayla, for being here. Kenny, appreciate you eating mushrooms. Show ends in 10 seconds. Ron's extending it one more. One more try, Ron. Brett Favre coming back to QP. <laughs> Uh, you go live more than two times, it stops sending notifications. Oh, yeah. So, I, to explain why I didn't go live on the Deontay thing. So, it seems like when you go live more than two times a day, they, they throttle your notifications. Now, that may change as you're consistent and, and YouTube can read, hey, this is actually good for us that this guy goes live three or four times a day. Um, but I think initially when you when you when you do that and you, you aren't going live two or three times a day and you do go live two or three times a day, it starts throttling your notifications and doesn't let everybody know. And I didn't want to necessarily go live on this sh- on uh, on Deontay Johnson because I personally, you know, it wasn't the craziest news to me. 
but that wasn't up to me. I should have I should have went live anyway. But the reason I didn't Show go live one is I didn't want the the Sean Watson news to break or something crazy to happen, and then already have you know this live stream affected notification wise or that bigger one affected. So I kind of made a judgment call that there could be more breaking news coming that day today. So kind of was in my my thoughts, but I should have just went live anyway. I will try and I will do better. I will try to go live three times a day. I apologize. <laughs> I should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> What's up, Drew? Look at is that Zamir again? That's Abdullah. They, they, all these Raiders look like absolute Hall of Famers running against this Jags defense. Uh, we can't take anything from this. Jacobs is going to see his value bolt up. Appreciate you all. Get on over to thefantasyfootballshow.com. Show Get your lifetime membership, your bowl predictions, your one on one text device. Play underdog fantasy promo code Smitty link in the chat. Let's go. I'll see you all tomorrow, Goodbye. 7 p.m. Eastern or earlier because your boy Smitty almost always goes live whenever news breaks. See you all tomorrow. Appreciate you. Peace out. Discord, go to thefantasyfootballshow.com. Storm chat, click on the Discord link. Appreciate you all. Matt in the building late. Join the Facebook group, says Terry. Link has been dropped by Terry. Appreciate every single one of you. Later, Meet the Woo. Later, Jack. Later, Legion. Later, Ron Navy. Thank you for taking care of all the super chat action. Trigger Ron, Trigger Man Ron. Appreciate you all. See you tomorrow. 7 p.m. Eastern or earlier. Later. People are getting burrowed left and right, and people are going to remember it. Get burrowed.